Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Education's 26th Annual Presentation of Awards for Distinguished Service to Public Education. I am Carla Silvestre, President of the Board of Education. And on behalf of the Board, I want to thank you for being here for this wonderful evening. Before we proceed with the ceremony, I would like to acknowledge the quartet of talented MCPS students who have graciously agreed to provide entertaining for us this evening. We are gonna ask them to stand up and wave as I call their names. Uh, Jessica Zhu, violin number one from Wooten High School. Faith Zhang, violin number two from Winston Churchill High School. Anna Lee Viola from Richard Montgomery High School. And Joey Shi Cello from Quince Orchard High School. Let's give them a big round of applause. I would also like to recognize my colleagues who are here, and I'd like them to please stand up and be recognized. Brenda Wolf. Rebecca Smondrowski. Shebra Evans. Julie Yang. And Lynn Harris. Before we proceed, I also want to take a moment to recognize our elected officials and other special guests. Uh, if we could ask them to please stand. We are honored to have Council Member Laurie Ann Sales with us. Also honored to have Council Member Natalie Fanny Gonzalez. Honored to have former board members Michael Durso. Alan Chung, and two former school board uh, student members, Eric Gersey and Dustin Jeter. Tonight we honor members of our community. Oh, one more honored guest. Thank you for joining us. We honor members of our community for their exemplary work on behalf of all of our students. To our 17 award recipients, we are happy that you're here and we wish you a memorable evening. Our honorees are wearing boutonnieres, like this one here, so if you see them, please congratulate them. The program provides details about each awardee as shared by their nominator. In a moment, I will call upon board members to make the presentations for our honorees. We will play pre-recorded remarks from the nominators of each distinguished awardee, and then each awardee will share their own remarks. I also would ask the honorees to remain until the end of the ceremony so that we can take a group photo. We will now begin presenting the first of our 17 Distinguished Service Awards for 2023. I will start the evening with the presentation of our first category and that is community individuals. I have the great privilege of introducing this category to recognize community members who have made a significant contribution to public education. We begin with the first nominator video for Mr. Jeru Bande. I'm thrilled that the Board of Education is recognizing Mr. Jeru Banda, the Director of the Regional Services Center for Eastern Montgomery County this evening as one of the recipients of the Distinguished Service Award. Jeru is informally known as the Mayor of East County. He is at every event cheering on our school system and our students and our teachers and our administrators and our staff. He is a steadfast partner and helping us reach the residents of East County, promoting our materials and events through his weekly newsletter and partnering with us to help build trust with the Eastern part of the county, including on projects such as the new Burtonsville Elementary School. Jeru has been instrumental in helping us become closer with the community, which is one of the superintendent's priorities. 
and he has connected the superintendent with a variety of events, including visiting a service on Eid of last year to strengthen our connections with the Muslim community in Montgomery County. We are all so grateful for Jeru's contributions and thank him for continuing to work alongside us to provide services and education for all of our residents, including our residents of Eastern Montgomery County. Jeru, please come forward. Wow, what a privilege to be able to give this award to Jeru. Everybody knows Jeru is uh, such an advocate and uh, representative of the East County community. So Thank it's you. an honor. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm to hold up for you while you give your remarks. Okay. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Good, good evening. And for most of you who know me, know I'm not the type that makes speeches. Now, this is why. <laughs> I don't make speeches. Uh, I really enjoy uh, working behind the scenes uh, to uh, get it done. Uh, but again, I'm very honored and uh, I'm very humbled and uh, would like to thank uh, uh, the team, the school system, for uh, this recognition. And for many of you who know me, uh, or I would say many of you may not know, uh, as a Senegambian, I came to the United States at the age of 16 uh, to attend high school in Tennessee. And uh, from there, I went to uh, the University of Missouri. And then uh, career-wise, I've also worked as a, a executive director of the largest school district in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, as the CEO of school operations. And uh, I used to run Head Start programs, community action agencies, early childhood education programs. So for me, uh, education means a lot. I'm one of the first in our family who chose to come to America and not go to uh, Europe uh, because uh, we learned very early about the promise America has uh, for people who are dedicated and work hard. I chose to uh, enter the educational arena uh, rather than pursuing my soccer goals because I was trained to become a professional soccer player. But I'm glad I took that route, and I am still glad that I'm still in the public education space. My children went to public schools, and uh, I also happened to be extremely blessed to be in a job where I could still work and contribute to society my uh, life is always driven by three basic principles. One is uh, accepting responsibility. Two, which is more tribal, I'm a Fulani, in that putting people first, and you begin with children. Three, is respecting humanities. To me, those principles, they drive what I do. And for many of you who I've worked, I've worked with, I know a lot of people in here, and I've consider that to be a blessing. Uh, the job is never done. Uh, the whole issue of education uh, is like a revolving uh, uh, situation you know, with humanities that we learn to relearn, but to engage. Uh, my job is to provide support as a regional director to help facilitate, uh, to galvanize, and to advocate. And I, have, I happen to find that with our school officials, parents, advocates, and stakeholders who have a very deep interest in education. Again, going back to my roots, how I came in here, it is education that made me what I am. And so I have a responsibility to give back to our community. So I do that through the collaborations and the collective partnerships uh, my job had, offers me, had offered me, but also on a personal level, the friendships we developed, uh, because we all have a common goal in working with children, families, and communities. I am very honored, I'm humbled, and I look forward to making sure uh, we get the funding as proposed for the public schools so that we can do great things. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before I uh, call up our next um, 
Award recipient, I do want to recognize Jared Solomon, who walked in the door. So if we could give him a round of applause, please stand to be recognized. And our superintendent of schools, uh, didn't recognize her from the beginning, Dr. Monifa McKnight. And John McCarthy, who is being recognized today, but of course, our, also an elected official, state attorney from Montgomery County, John McCarthy. Okay, so up next, tengo el placer, I have the pleasure of uh, introducing our next award recipient, Ricardo Loaiza, and our nominator uh, will, we will watch the video from our nominator. It was my very great pleasure to nominate Ricardo Loaiza for MCPS's Distinguished Service Award. I've had the opportunity to work with Ricardo over the last 10 or so years on the board of the After School Dance Fund, and I've been so inspired by his commitment and dedication to the students of Montgomery County Public Schools, their parents, their teachers, their dance instructors, their principals, and their administrators. With his artistic talent, his hard work, and his vision, he has created a countywide organization that has lifted up the whole of our Montgomery County community and benefited thousands of MCPS students by extolling the virtue of a Latin culture, promoting Latin dance, while encouraging students to strive for their highest goals of academic achievement. Those of you who have had an opportunity to witness uh, the MCPS Latin dance competition at Strathmore know well the spirit, the joy, and the excellence on display there from the student participants from our county's high schools. I've often said that it's the finest arts entertainment program in the county, and it's largely because of Ricardo Luisa's energy and his desire to help MCPS students be the best that they can be. Through the movements of salsa, cha-cha, merengue, and bachata, Ricardo has inspired and supported the students and their families from all backgrounds from all across the county. He truly is a Montgomery County treasure and worthy of recognition, very richly deserved by Montgomery County Schools. Congratulations, Ricardo Loaiza. Ricardo, please come forward. Now, Ricardo has tried very hard to teach me to dance, Latin dance. And I'm learning about growth mindset, so I don't Latin dance yet, but I'm working on it, right? Ricardo. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I want to thank the MCPS, the superintendent, and the Board of Education for the $250,000 check. Um, and that's when my alarm rang this morning to take my kids to school because my wife had to get ready to be here for early meetings. So thank you so much for having me. Um, <clears throat> I wish um, I could speak like Jerud, Um but in this type of occasions, I thought that I, uh, I'd be better scripted. So when I start this, everybody, first I would like to congratulate all the other award recipients today. I'm humbled to have been nominated for this recognition by Mr. Alan Bowser, who has been a great friend and board member since the beginning of the After School Dance Fund. Thank you to the Board of Education and the Selection Committee for awarding me with the great honor of distinguished service to public education as a community individual. I'm fortunate to have contributed my service, Latin dance instruction skills, and event production expertise to Montgomery County, which has been my home since 1996. Back then, our Hispanic Latino community was, the, was to become the fastest growing MCPS student population, and our families needed to feel inclusive, respected, and accepted within the school system. That is when I realized that Latin dancing could be the vehicle to share our culture and help us strengthen our presence while supporting our youth socially and emotionally. Today, I believe that MCPS, that the MCPS Latin dance competition has evolved thanks to the students, teachers, instructors, sponsors, and principals into an exceptional and unique award-winning annual event that represents our county-wide values of unity while showcasing the importance of the Latino-Hispanic performing arts here at home. 
As you may or may not know, this is a personal passion that became an obsession to give back. I always joke that I will have already been divorced if I hadn't married my best friend, dance partner, and the mother of my children. Therefore, I want to thank you, Elba, for having faith in me and standing by me during good and bad times all these years. At last, unconditional love and support are what one needs to succeed. Furthermore, getting this award is historically vital to me, especially when the first female superintendent in MCPS is in office and the Board of Education comprises all women members, including two Latinas and Mr. Kim. <laughs> it reminds me of the wise words of the strong woman in my family, some who are here today. They are always a reminder that you shouldn't sit still or walk if the music moves your soul, but rather learn to dance and bring your own rhythms to share so we all can enjoy it. I'm grateful for you all and honor you at this moment. Finally, I'm reminded that no one will value your actions more than you do. No one is an expert in life matters when your dream seems out of reach. All the obstacles and barriers between you and your goals are a test to question your characters and composure, and that is when all the bitter experiences will eventually have a sweet outcome. That's why everything that seemed impossible to achieve in the spur of the moment is put to the test of time. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Up next, I, well, I do want to recognize our student member, Arvin Kim, who has joined us. Let's give him a round of applause. And I have the honor to introduce Julie Yang, who will take it from here. Right here. Thank you. Good evening. I'm so happy to be here. Was the food good? Yes. Okay. It was good. Okay. And when I walk in today, I was impressed by the transformation of this room. So thank you, board staff. You did a terrific job. Thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. Um, public schools is education. Public education is a whole society's endeavor. It's a public function for the whole society. And we are very lucky in public schools to have the support of our state delegates, to have the support of our county council, to have the partnership of our state attorney's office. And we are also so blessed in Montgomery County to have such a vibrant community group, so many vibrant community groups that are partners in our effort to provide a good education uh, for all the students and services for our families. So tonight is my distinct honor to um, introduce all these wonderful groups that's being awarded tonight. Uh, can we please play the video, first video for our group? The first group is I'm trying to find the notes here. Oh, I found it. It's right here. OK. The first video is to the Black Ministers Conference of Montgomery County, Maryland. It's sitting right there. Video, please. First off, I'd like to thank our school board for awarding the Distinguished Service to Public Education to the Black Ministers Conference of Montgomery County. We often say it takes a village to raise our children. The Black Ministers Conference of Montgomery County, Maryland, are the leaders of our village as we seek to provide our students with the academic, social emotional, mental health, nutritional, and material supports that are necessary for learning at the highest levels. The Black Ministers Conference is an alliance of predominantly Black churches in Montgomery County, Maryland, that have joined together to promote the causes of the Black community, including economic prosperity, equal education opportunity, racial justice, equality, and equal access to quality health care, while fighting against the threats to Black people and the Black community, including COVID-19 
and other health care issues for Black people, racial prejudice, hatred, bigotry, discrimination, injustice, and poverty. Fighting against these interrelated causes is a critically important prerequisite for learning at the highest levels. And Montgomery County Public Schools is fortunate to have the Black Ministers Conference championing, championing those causes. The Black Ministers Conference has worked hard in Montgomery County to enrich the lives of its citizens collectively. Individually, they have partnered with the NAACP and various other organizations, attend countless meetings and advocate on behalf of the under, underserved. They have hosted black backpack drives, served as testing sites uh, during the height of COVID-19 pandemic, served as food distribution sites and closet clothing closets, raising thousands of dollars and clothing hundreds of children. Beyond what can easily be counted, the conference has helped rebuild trust between the school system and the community in the aftermath of the pandemic as the school system seeks to improve mathematics and literacy and re-engage students in learning and lead from an anti-racist stance. It is with my great honor that I was able to nominate the Black Ministers Conference for this very well-deserved award. I look forward to you all receiving this award and also I look forward to continuing working with you in the future as we look to make Montgomery County Public Schools one of the greatest school districts in the country. Thank you. Us. Accepting the award on behalf of the Black Minister Conference of Montgomery County, Maryland is Dr. Jareth Murray. Please come to the front. Good evening. To the board and all of the administrators and officers of the school district of Montgomery County, Black Ministers Conference of Montgomery County thanks you for this award. I see so many familiar faces. Um, I've been in the county since, well, not very long, since 19, I think we moved from California in 88. John McCarthy <coughs> was my son's basketball coach in elementary school. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we go back a long ways. Um, but one of the things about Montgomery County that I think we all need to recognize is the fact that things are changing. Um, when we moved here, um, we decided on Montgomery County based on the school district, based on, on what we had read and heard about the quality of education, which is extremely important to my family. Um, in 2002, I ran for office for the Maryland General Assembly. And at that time, there were no African Americans in the Maryland General Assembly from Montgomery County. And the joke in Annapolis was that they didn't have any black folks in Montgomery County. I didn't do what you were, what, quote, you were supposed to do. I ran a campaign talking about giving voice to the entire community because our community was not heard at that point in time. My kickoff campaign was on a weekend, which one of the uh, writers in the newspaper said was crazy because no one does that, especially on a holiday weekend. And I told him, well, some people work during the week, and therefore you do it on a day when more folks can show up. Why do I say that? Well, I won, number one. So along with uh, Herman Taylor, 
we became the first African American representatives in the Maryland General Assembly from Montgomery County. We served in the House of Delegates. When we look at our school district, a lot of folks say, well, it's a great school district, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That may be so. But I think we have to keep in mind that as things change within the county, as the demographics shift, as the needs within the county shift, we need leadership in the county that's willing to look at what isn't exactly right, what may be a little out of whack in the, in the system, and address those needs. And so the Black Ministers Conference has always been in support of our superintendents. And that stands so right now because um, there's some things that we feel uh, the superintendent would like to address. And I hope that we will stand behind her and with her as she starts to look at the things that we need to, we need to pay attention to in the county that we didn't have to deal with before. Um, teen pregnancy, other kinds of things that we never thought about when my kids got here. But the Black Ministers Conference stands for giving voice to all of our communities, not just the black community, but we're for the black community because so often our voices have not been heard. So I just ask you to continue to support Montgomery County Public Schools and keep it as a school district where everyone is welcome and the needs of all of our children are addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Murray. If you still have pictures of John playing basketball as a coach, I would like to see them. <laughs> All right. Um, second, I would like to, um, can we play the video uh, the, for um, the CTE Healthcare Profession Pack, our second uh, awardees? Play the video, please. Good evening. I am Dr. Genevieve Floyd, MCPS Supervisor of Career and Post-Secondary Partnerships, and I am delighted to present a phenomenal group of stakeholders who are committed to supporting our career programs, our teachers, our staff, and of course, our students. They are the Career and Technical Education's Healthcare Professions Program Advisory Committee. This committee is comprised of individuals in the healthcare industry, but also from Montgomery College and the community at large, who've supported us through some of the most challenging years as we have collectively navigated through this pandemic. The president, Mrs. Sarah Walker, is remarkable and is passionate about this work. And, and under her leadership, the advisory committee has done so much for our students in the last three years, including providing a multitude of work-based learning experiences for all of our career program students in the healthcare professions. It, it really does take a village. It takes the collective internal and external student, um, stakeholders working together, working in concert to make sure our students are well and well prepared for their post-secondary endeavors. And I believe it is this gifting of service by this committee that has enabled so many of our students in the healthcare programs to complete their career program and earn industry recognized credentials. They are extraordinary. And I'm so honored to work with each member. Tonight, the Career and Technical Education Healthcare Professions Program Advisory Committee is the recipient of the Board of Education's Distinguished Service Award for a Community Group. Please join me in applauding and acknowledging their heart to serve. Accepting this award um, is Ms. Sarah Walker. Please come out to the front. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank the Board of Education and the MCPS team. Um, my pack is absolutely amazing, so I couldn't bring them all. They told me I could only bring five guests. I'm like, that's not enough seats. Uh, so um, I'd also like to thank my husband who's here tonight. Uh, he has been very understanding of all the nights that I've come home very late, some of which were completely unexpected. I had students drop in at all times in my office. So. Um, I do want to say, you know, uh, I don't know how many Dollyisms you are familiar with, but my favorite Dolly Parton quote is, <laughs> um, "Find out who you are and do it with purpose." And I think that really represents all of us here. Um, we start our meetings at Holy Cross Health, which is where I work, um, with a reflection to bring us all together. And I love to use that quote because. I really feel like we are encouraging our students to figure out what it is that they want to do with their lives. And whether they know in eighth grade when they choose the healthcare professions uh, pathway, or whether it takes them all the way till their junior year to figure it out, um, or that last day of senior year when they get a special recognition for a CTE program. A lot of times the students are like, my experience led me to believe that this is not what I want. And I'm like, that's OK. I wanted to be an astronaut and a pilot and a farmer. You know, you take those like seventh grade things about what you would excel at. I was like, Ugh. Um, but that's OK. And I think one of the things that I truly value about being not only a PAC member but the president is that in a lot of ways, we are giving these students opportunities to try new things to excel somewhere before they're expected, expected to excel in life. To figure out, do I need to take the next step here? Right? I often tell the students, don't waste your parents' money going through three years of med school after undergrad to figure out that you don't want to be a doctor. <laughs> um, and we are giving these students the opportunity to say, yep, this is for me. And not only are they saying, yes, this is for me, but they're also saying, thank you to MCPS for giving them that opportunity. And as a PAC, we do what we can to support the students. During the, the pandemic, obviously, healthcare professions, there was this great need. Everybody turned their eyes to healthcare. And it was wonderful to see our PAC pull together to say, how do we get to yes? When places are saying no for internships, when students are not being in the classroom, how do we bring them out and use their skills that they've learned at MCPS to really apply and help the community thrive during the pandemic? So again, I want to say thank you so much to all of the wonderful members of the PAC who have helped me and the students get to yes. Thank you. Ms. Walker reminded me that there are so many family members here today supporting the awardees. They are uh, all the recipients putting a lot of hours that come with a personal sacrifice. So let's give all the families a round of applause. Thank you for your support. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, next. Um, the third nomination goes to Jewish Community Relations Council. Let's please play the video. Hi, I'm Celia Fisher, Assistant Chief of Communications for Montgomery County Public Schools. I am pleased to have sponsored JCRC, the Jewish Community Relations Council, for this Board of Education Distinguished Service to Public Education Award. The JCRC is an organization that deserves recognition for its valuable efforts in advocating not only for Jewish students, but for all students and staff of our school system and our entire community, both at MCPS and beyond. Their tireless work in Montgomery County has been instrumental in assisting our schools and school leaders to address the rising tide of anti-Semitism and to support MCPS to educate about anti-Semitism and to include Holocaust education at appropriate points in our curriculum. Their tireless efforts in arranging and facilitating the recent town meetings have allowed for deep conversations between MCPS's Jewish students, school staff, school system leaders, and parents and families. 
Importantly, doing this work helps to establish an inclusive learning environment in our schools by working to ensure Jewish voices are heard and their issues are understood. Their efforts have also taught students to speak up and report incidents of hate and bias without fear of reprisal. Finally, the JCRC's commitment to social justice is inspiring, and I'm pleased we are celebrating their work in Montgomery County Public Schools with this prestigious Distinguished Service Award. Congratulations to JCRC. Accepting the award on behalf of JCRC is Ms. Gina Franklin Siegel. Good evening. Um, I want to thank the Board of Education and Celia Fisher, um, with whom we work very closely, um, for this award. We are deeply honored to, uh, and I am honored to accept it on behalf of the entire staff and leadership of the Jewish Community Relations Council. We deeply value our partnership with MCPS. Everyone from Dr. McKnight and Board of Education members to administrators, principals, teachers, students, and caregivers. Each year, the JCRC brings Holocaust survivors and their descendants to speak with thousands of MCPS students and faculty. Through our student-to-student -student peer education program, we empower Jewish high schoolers to share their identities and their experiences with fellow teens, nurturing greater empathy and mutual respect and cultural awareness. And we work collaboratively on curriculum improvements, faith community engagement in our schools, and responses to anti-Semitic incidents. This has not been an easy year for the Jewish community. The numbers, anti-Semitic incidents up by 261% here in Montgomery County alone, can't fully reflect the very personal pain, fear, and shock we have seen among parents, students, rabbis, and educators over the last several months. But we know we are not in this fight alone. And I want to take a moment to uh, recognize the Black Ministers Conference, which um, uh, after several very disturbing anti-Semitic incidents in a row, uh, sent a public letter to the Washington Board of Rabbis expressing solidarity and allyship, and it was so deeply appreciated. Dr. McKnight, thank you for passionately and courageously naming anti-Semitism and for committing yourself and your team to identifying concrete steps that MCPS can undertake to tackle this pernicious hatred. Many thanks as well to Brian Stockton, Eric Garcy, Tracy Oliver Gary, Greg Edmondson, Peter Moran, John Landsman, and so many others with whom we work on a daily basis. Even as the JCRC is laser focused on responding to anti-Semitism, we remain deeply committed to working with coalition partners and school leaders to ensure that all students, especially those who are most acutely marginalized, can learn in schools that are truly equitable, where they are not subjected to systemic racism and other forms of bias and routine bigotry, where they can flourish and realize their maximum potential. Dr. King famously said, I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. These are the values that guide us every day at the JCRC. Thank you again for this wonderful honor. OK, commercial break, commercial break. Must see TV this Thursday, board meeting. Uh, we will have MCPS present the anti-racism audit action
plan. So Thursday, tune in at 11 o'clock, all right? Okay, next, uh, it's my honor uh, to call on the Street Outreach Network. That's our next nomination. Please play the video. Hello, my name is Allison Baber, and I work for Montgomery County Public Schools in the Department of System-Wide Safety and Emergency Management. I would like to thank the school board for allowing Luis Cardonas to receive Distinguished Service Award that he is so well deserved of. Mr. Cardonas has worked with our school system for many, many years. He is a true pioneer when it comes to working with at-risk youth, families, and community. We are a better place because of Mr. Cardonas. Mr. Cardonas has true passion, commitment, experience, and he always goes above and beyond when you reach out with a concern. He also surrounds himself with a very strong SUNS team that have the same passion, dedication, and experience as Mr. Cardonas. Luis, it has been a privilege and an honor to know you and to work with you. I know whenever I reach out or any of our staff reach out that they are going to be listened to and the right course of action is gonna be taken. I can't thank you enough. Again, it is a true privilege to know you and to know that you are getting this award that you are so well deserved of. Thank you for all of your commitment to at-risk youth and our schools and communities. Thank you. Mr. Luis Cardona, please come to the front. Next year, can we have the Oscar music play? Sure. Yeah. Take note. My bodyguards. Well, good evening. I'd like to take the opportunity to thank uh, MCPS, the school board, Dr. McKnight, for honoring us in this in this good way. Also, want to acknowledge um, <clears throat> my team. As you, we, we, I couldn't do this without these two gentlemen behind me, um, and as many. So I'm just letting you know as I'm winding down and coming towards that end of my career here. Uh, the baton is getting passed on to these brothers and they're gonna hold it down. And they'll do a better job than I would. Um, it's so ironic because as I pulled up into the parking lot, the first person I see is Mike Dorso, right? And Mr. Dorso and I go way back. I'm talking about summer school at Lincoln Middle School back. So Mr. Dorso, every, all those times I was in and, uh, in and out of your office, getting into trouble, I bet you never saw this coming, right? But that's how fate works, right? Um, it is a true honor for us, and not just in the Street Outreach Network, but in the whole portfolio of the HHS Positive Youth Development Program to do what we do on behalf of all our children. Um, I know for me, having lived here in Montgomery County now going on 18 years, at the end of the night, when I go to sleep and I, I put my children to bed, I want my children to experience, and I'm talking about my children, I'm talking about all our children, to experience what my kids get to experience at the end of the night. And so uh, that is what drives us to help address the needs of many of the young people, but also many of the families that we serve here in Montgomery County. And we look forward to working um, continuously, I think uh, Reverend Murray uh, said it best in terms of some of the challenges that we're facing. But there is no coincidence here because if you really think about a lot of the folks who have gotten awards, whether it's my good friend Ricardo, Jeru, Mary, uh, others, we have something here in Montgomery County that, that is going to help us if we continue to use it and lift it in a good way. 
and that is culture. And many of you in this room have heard me say this often, culture cures. I didn't realize that until one of my students uh, in, in an undergrad course I taught many years ago prior to coming to Montgomery County did a, a, a resilience, a paper on resilience. And what it demonstrated was that when our children, regardless of race, ethnicity, lifestyle, social economics, whatever, when we really strengthen their culture and their ties to their culture and their connections, we enhance their protective factors. So with that, I joined my brother Jeru in saying that we, we hope that uh, MCPS budget continues to include <laughs> the music and the arts, because our children need that. And um, that's what drives a lot of, of our work, is that, that concept of cultura cura, culture cures. Within us exists the ability to work through what we experience in life. That is what we carry from us as the legacy of our ancestors, all of ours, regardless of what our, our path was to get here. So with that, I just want to thank all of you for the opportunity to just lift up the work that we do for the partnership that we have. We continue looking uh, forward to, to working together and see what the, what the future holds. But the one thing I will end on, on a real good note is I take pride in knowing that uh, of my entire team, there's nine MCPS graduates, and of that team, there's three former clients who were MCPS students that these gentlemen engaged with, and they're not working with us, right? So um, I want to thank you again. Have a blessed evening. All right. We have the fifth nomination, goes to Haiyan Chinese Academy, sitting right here. Please play the video. Hi, everyone. I'm Julie Ye, proudly serving on Montgomery County Board of Education. I'm do introducing Huayuan Chinese Academy. Huayuan Chinese Academy has been offering the teaching and learning of after-school Chinese language and cultural programs in seven MCPS elementary schools since 2009. Since 2013, Huayuan Chinese Academy has been offering Start Talk Chinese language summer programs for free to MCPS students in the Gaithersburg and Down County Title I schools. The free summer program integrates science with language and cultural learning. Over 70% of the students in the summer programs are our black and brown students, and the program prioritized acceptance to students with no or little previous Chinese language experience and students on free and reduced lunch. The summer programs provide a chance for students to meet students from other schools and communities and experience education beyond the regular school years. Huayuan Academy will once again offer free summer program this summer, 2023. Huayuan Chinese Academy brings the joys of learning and knowledge of language and culture to our students at MCPS. They have helped improve our students' communication skills, build student confidence to learn and excel and prepare them to be future global leaders. It has helped lessen the burden of after school and summer childcare for our residents. Thank you, Hua Yuan, for being a strong partner in literacy and language development with our school system. It is with great pleasure that I introduce this amazing group that is working for the common good. I don't know how to end this. <laughs> okay. um, please come out, Hua Yan Chinese Academy. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Hai Ying Ching. It's really, truly a great honor here. 
So on behalf of uh, Huayan Chinese Academy, I would like to thank Montgomery County Board of, Ed Board of Education and also our Honorable Julian for this Distinguished uh, Service Award. Um, so Huayan started our Chinese after-school program since 2009. And under the great leadership of Dr. Alan Chang and also great support of MCPS, we started receiving the Star Talk Fund since 2013. And the Star Talk Fund is aiming at uh, promoting uh, world critical languages, teaching and learning, and Chinese is one of that. So uh, we all know China holds one fourth of the whole population of the world. And believe it or not, China has also become one of the biggest economic country. So it's really, really critical for our younger generations to know both English and also Chinese. And Huayan, we just try our best, you know, do our small part, you know, for our community. Thank you very much, and we are looking forward to your continued support. Thank you. It really tonight demonstrate that saying it takes a whole village. Um, you are all great partners in our endeavor to provide a nurturing um, and enriched learning experience for our students. And also tonight, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge MCPS senior management. I see a lot of our uh, MCPS school leaders and central office leaders in the audience. Now, I'm one of the newbies on the Board of Education. Right? Once I got on the board, I realized how many evening events <laughs> there are. Okay, I'm elected to do this job, so I'm here. But all the leaders, our school leaders, our central office leaders, they have worked all day in the schools, and they are here in the evenings. And they are truly an important part of that village. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> yeah. Now I would like to invite board member Avan Kim and Vice President Shebra Evans to come up for the next presentation of the next awards. Good evening. I am pleased to introduce the nomination for our business category. This award goes to a business in Montgomery County that makes a significant contribution to public education. Please play the nominator video. Good evening. My name is Steve Bowden, supervisor of the Foundation's Office for MCPS. I have the distinct honor of introducing Kava, a recipient of the Board of Education's Distinguished Service to Public Education Award. Kava founders, Ted Ike and Chef Dimitri, live and practice a Mediterranean lifestyle where the importance of good food, gracious hospitality is ingrained through their words and actions. These successful MCPS graduates are committed to ensuring that future students have opportunities to follow in their footsteps. Ted is an engaged board member and founder for the Foundation for Hospitality and Restaurant Management, or FARM. Kava leadership has graciously donated an endless amount of time, expertise, kitchens, and staff to help MCPS students gain authentic experiences and industry connections for lucrative careers. Kava is an exemplary business partner and most deserving of this important recognition. Congratulations. If Mr. Ted Zanos Christos could join me at the front. It's 
two pages, but it's big font, so it'll be short. <laughs> Good evening. To the Board of Education members, Dr. McKnight, I'm thrilled to accept this recognition on behalf of the CAVA organization and on behalf of the Foundation for Hospitality and Restaurant Management. Thank you to whoever prepared the food. It's nice to be fed one since I'm usually doing all the feeding. <laughs> As Steve mentioned in his introduction, I'm a proud MCPS graduate, Paint Branch High School. Uh, yeah, <laughs> go Panthers. I uh, was part of the free lunch program also, so maybe that's what got me started in the, in the whole food business, who knows. Um, both my parents I'm, uh, are immigrants of, of Greece. My mom is a refugee of the country of Cyprus. Uh, where she came to the United States during the uh, Turkish invasion there. Uh, my wife is here with me too. She is Colombian and my son Yanni's here who's not paying attention, looking at the phone right now. Um, <laughs> hey Yanni. <laughs> um, you know, when I, when I founded Kava, the focus was on providing sustainable, quality-driven food and creating a, a diverse, welcoming culture. Uh, you know, my mom worked in restaurant business her whole life. She was a waitress, um, and she got nothing out of that business, right? She got, she actually just had hip surgery, so she got a bad hip, she got a bad knee, she had nothing at the end of it, no retirement, no social security, and so we really started this restaurant business to change the culture of, of restaurants themselves. I went to Paint Branch, of course, there wasn't an opportunity to join any hospitality programs or even go into the restaurant world. I went to University of Maryland. I went there for five years, did not graduate. Um, <laughs> I really wanted to be in the restaurant business and at that time there just wasn't the opportunity that, that I was looking for to, to do that. So I decided just to open my own restaurant. We opened that first restaurant with about $20,000 in Rockville, Maryland. We did all the work ourselves. Um, me and my uh, two other co-founders, one who went to Quince Orchard and the other one who went to Gaithersburg High School. We're currently in the process of opening our 270th restaurant in over 24 states. Yeah, thank you. But what I'm most proud of is how we have always actively, actively engaged with our local communities, whether it's Montgomery County or any of the 24 states that we are currently open in. Um, using that as a platform uh, to do good is, is something I'm really proud of. In 2018, we were presented with a unique opportunity to join together with other local businesses to support Montgomery County Public Schools. In order to support hospitality and culinary programming throughout Montgomery County Public Schools, the Foundation for Hospitality and Restaurant Management was, and we call that FARM, by, I don't know, it's kind of a coincidence, but it was established as the fourth nonprofit educational foundation within, within the school system. It followed the successful business models by the three other sister foundations, the Automotive, the Construction, and the Information Technology Foundations. The foundations work with students to provide career enriching experiences. Internships, apprenticeships, mock interviews, field trips, and opportunities for students to learn how to operate a business. Throughout these foundations and all of the work our business partners do, it's evident that our work aligns with the Board of Education's focus on creating productive business partnerships. The Farm Foundation is like a family, and we celebrate the successes of our students, as well, of all, as, well as all of our business partners who work behind the scenes to make farm programming meaningful. I'd like to recognize Steve, who's here, who nominated me from the county of school system. He's been a wonderful conduit, uh, which, which makes partnering with the district very easy. He's always the person I call when I get a no to get a yes. <laughs> There's a lot of work ahead. Many students will continue to benefit from these amazing partnerships. We had uh, a great experience popping up a restaurant at the Falls Road Golf Course. Uh, which was an amazing experience. We used the students to plan the entire evening, the menu, the cooking, the serving, the setting up of the tables, and we use these as ways to show how, what the restaurant community can provide. It's not just a waiter job, it's not just a dishwasher job. There are development jobs, there are uh, accounting jobs, there are real estate jobs, there are many, many jobs, and there are countless individuals that work in my in, within the Kava Corporation that make well over $200,000 a year. So this is not just about being a dishwasher or a server. There are countless, countless opportunities for kids uh, to be able to find in the hospitality programs. Um, 
there's a lot of work ahead. Many students will continue to benefit from these amazing partnerships. So I thank you for the opportunity to work with your students, teachers, and programs. And I greatly appreciate this wonderful recognition. And I want to thank my wife for supporting me. And of course, someone mentioned here tonight that it takes a lot of time and effort um, to do these things. And so without her, I, I wouldn't be able to do it. She's been with me since restaurant number one. So <laughs> she's. Uh, <laughs> So thank you very much. I truly appreciate it. And congratulations to everyone here this evening receiving an award. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zanos Christos. What a well-deserved and appetizing honor. I now have the privilege of introducing the MCPS staff category. Uh, awardees in this category work for MCPS, but go above and beyond their regular duties. It is my honor to introduce the first nominator vid video for Ms. Aranda Brown. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you to the Board of Education for recognizing Aranda Brown. Aranda Brown is a proud educator of Gaithersburg High School. I am so proud of her uh, getting this award. I am one of her alumni from back in 2015, and I'm so proud of everything that she's accomplished as a teacher, as an educator, as a second mother to many of us here in Gaithersburg High School, and her continuous support um, to make sure that we become the, the best students, the best leaders of tomorrow. Um, I'm grateful for all the support she's given me. I'm grateful for all the support she's given uh, to the faculty and staff of Gaithersburg High School. And most importantly, everyone in um, the club she's ran. Uh, during my time in, in Gaithersburg High School, she had been a rock in my foundation of trying to get through higher ed. And I know that this is a shared sentiment that many of us uh, at part of Sabor Latino um, feel, feel with her because of all of the support she's given us. And I couldn't think of anyone uh, better than to, than Miss Brown to get this award. So I didn't prepare because I'm too busy to even have really like processed. People have been coming to tell me congratulations all week and it just kind of like washed over me because I'm, I don't know, I have a thousand things to do as teachers know. Um, so whatever I'm about to say is about to like download right now. <laughs> um, but it's crazy looking at this room. And thinking back to where I started, hi, Mr. Durso. <laughs> Mr. Durso was the principal at Springbrook High School when I began my career as a paraeducator here at MCPS 20 years ago. Um, and I just want to say thank you now that I've given the chance for all the quiet mentorship that you provided in those four years while I was there. And I have taken it with me um, as I have moved on. I guess what I'm really here to do is um, a couple things. One is to support or to, to thank from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of my team. <laughs> Some of them are here unbeknownst to me. <laughs> um, really just, I'm so moved to just say thank you for the support that I have had. Um, from our current administration just to be able to do what I need to do from day to day and just you know know that when I go in the office 
somebody's got my back. That has meant a world to me in the last few years. And that has made all the difference in being able to really push our team to the success that they've had. But as you can see, the success is not just that, you know, we've been the most recent winners two years in a row <laughs> of the MCPS Latin Dance Competition. Um, but, you know, it's the successes of people like Luz who came to this country not knowing she was an undocumented immigrant and helping her navigate to now become one of the most important community advocates in Gaithersburg and how much she has then reached back and helped our community. Um, so, one, I just want to say thank you to all the support and leadership that I've had for, you know, with, within school and within partnership organizations. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, and then also just to be here, I guess, as a representation because if I would think back to my upbringing and my ability to have come up in dance studios, dancing as a young student, and knowing that um, that was a privilege and to be able to now give that back to students who, who couldn't pay that tuition, who couldn't have paid for the, the costumes and the shoes and the travel and the, all of the things that it takes to have a successful dance program. And to be able to give that back now, you know, as someone who you might not look at and say, that's a dance coach, right? But, you know, I think it's just really important that as a system that we really invest in and support the deep diversity and excellence that our staff has that goes far beyond what you would see on the surface. Because when I was hired 20 years ago as a paraeducator, nobody would have told you that I'd be standing here as a recipient of an award for an award-winning dance team. So. I just really want to thank MCPS. Thank you, Dr. McKnight, for the commitments that you have made on behalf of programs like ours. And my sincerest goal is that this type of success is as regular as football teams in every high school in this county. Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, our next awardee is Ms. Cheryl Saletti. Please play the video. Ms. Cheryl Saletti has been serving Montgomery County Public Schools for 33 years. In those 33 years, Ms. Saletti has demonstrated her passion and commitment to students in public education. She is deserving of the Board of Education's Distinguished Service to Public Education Award, and we are so thrilled to honor her today. Through our ever-changing world of education, Ms. Saletti has been a constant she has used her life experience, child development expertise, and research on the highly gifted child to ensure that even through the changes, she is delivering the very best of herself to her students. She's tackled new curricula, various revisions to state standards, yearly upgraded technology, and new system platforms with ease. Those that are close to her know the enormous amount of time and endless hours she has spent planning and honing her skills. Even now at 70 years young, Ms. Saletti remains extremely dedicated to providing her students a rigorous and robust instructional day. One specific contribution that should be acknowledged by Ms. Saletti's work is the Gemstone Project for her Center for Enrichment Students that is completed yearly. The project is a performance of a Shakespeare's play for our community and our students. Ms. Saletti selects the work and everything else is done by the students. This rich experience allows students to not only read for understanding, make meaning and connections to Shakespeare's work, but enables students to showcase talents from costume design and set making to directing and acting. The students work for over a month and often spend time after school rehearsing. Ms. Saletti invites in community members and former students to support this work. She collaborates with family, which demonstrates a very effective and successful, strong partnership that families play in the role of education. Congratulations, Ms. Saletti. From all of us here at your Cold Spring family, we are so proud of you.
Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. I'm 70 years short also, so I think I'm going to move it down. Uh, thank you to everyone. I have a very short speech. I am a teacher. We are taught to, to follow the rules, and we were asked to keep our speeches under two minutes. And I believe mine is well under that. So in advance, thank every, I thank everyone who is here. But I want to just read my little speech and move on to the next person. Henry David Thoreau, in the famous Walden, stated, if a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away. To me, this defines the ideal leadership style. Let them embrace what they do best wholeheartedly and without encumbrance. Encourage them to find their paths and let them pursue them with passion. I am able to stand by this wise saying every single day in my classroom because of the example set by the leadership of the administration of this school. Natalie Hambrecht and Ben Legaretta, our principal and assistant principal at Cold Spring, understand and value individuality in all people, students and teachers alike, and encourage them to be their best selves. They model the very best in leadership and give us the confidence to do it our way. Thank you, Natalie and Ben, and all the people in the board and everyone else I'm supposed to thank, my husband, so thank you very much. Congratulations, Ms. Saletti. Our next nominee in this category uh, goes to Ms. Uh, Farzane Nabavian. Please play the nominator's video. Good evening. I'm Renee Johnson. I'm the proud principal of Montgomery Blair High School, home of the Blazers. I want to thank the Board of Education and Dr. McKnight for the Distinguished Service Awards. I nominated our parent community coordinator, Farzane Nabavian, for the staff award. Ms. Nababian has been an asset to Montgomery Blair High School. She helps our parents navigate the large high school system. She picks them up for meetings. She sits with them during the meeting, and she really has made herself known in the Blair community. She's someone our students and parents reach out to them in times of need. During a recent fire we had in the community, Ms. Nababian reached out to the family and made sure that the family had everything they needed from clothes to household items and a number of things. But she's best known at Montgomery Blair for establishing the Kindness Corner. The Kindness Corner is a place where students go to to get coats and clothes and shoes and socks and snacks and book bags and school supplies. And you may say, do high school students really need those things? Yes, they do. Our students, um, sometimes need new sneakers for athletics or need clean socks or need book bags. And there's nothing that makes a high school student feel better than having a brand new backpack full of school supplies to come to school every day. Um, Ms. Nababian also does Friday freebies where we set up in our cafeteria for students to come in. All of our students come in and take what they need um, and also provides a place for our community to also donate. When they see that it's supporting our students, and helping them to be successful with the materials they need to be successful. Our PTSA and our school community donates to make sure our students have what they need. So I wanna thank Faye for all she does for Montgomery Blair and the Blair community. Congratulations.
Thank you so much. Um, I'm not the best speaker. I wrote it so many times, and I finally took a picture of it on my iPad. So, <laughs> um, I want to thank you for this award. It's amazing to receive it, and I really appreciate Ms. Johnson nominating me while she was on sick leave, <laughs> um, doing surgery, making sure that she nominates me. And thank you to the Board of Education and Dr. McKnight. Um, there are so many familiar faces here that I have worked with when I was spending time at Office of School Supply and you know, OSSI, and now at Blair. So <clears throat> let me read my speech, because as a parent community coordinator, you don't really give speeches. <laughs> um, thank you so much for this award. It, is, it means more than what I can imagine. Um, my job as a parent community coordinator is so rewarding to me. I love my job. I think I have circled back all my life. I'm 62 years old, and I'm doing what I really want to do in my life. Um, so if I die tomorrow, I'm very happy doing what I love. <laughs> because of this, I created um, the Kindness Corner which is an umbrella of every available school and community resources at Blair High School. With the support of Ms. Johnson, which I always talk to her about everything that I want to do at the school, because she is the captain of the ship. And with her support and the support of many other people at the school, I created the Kindness Corner in November of 2019. And I remember it so well, because it was right before the pandemic happened. And because a lot of cancellations happened, our communication and arts program had some extra money left over, which they donated it to Kindness Corner. And so that you know, the Kindness Corner actually started in the corner of my office. So I brought stuff from my house and put it in the corner. And that's why I called it the Kindness Corner. And the reason that idea came up, I'm not going to go on my speech, Regan. Um, I'm originally from Iran, and I saw a picture of a street in Iran that they had two hooks on a tree. Take one if you need, leave one if you don't. That's how I came up with the idea of the kindness corner. So I was thinking about it, and I figured I better share that because it was so you know, emotional for me that during all these bad things that are happening in all these countries, they actually had that, and it's still going on. I still see those pictures you know, taken and you know, shared around. So that's just a little background on that. Um, and I could have not done this without the support of Ms. Johnson, um, Teens Helping Seniors, um, which drew Pai also. His other teacher from his uh, school also was a recipient just before me. Um, the, um, all the staff members at uh, <clears throat> Blair High School, the PTSA, they all have been very generously offering me money or clothing or items. So um, basically, um, I want to thank you, my director, my colleague, Mr. Davis, Everett Davis sitting there, that supports me on everything I want to do. And one of the biggest things that I like to do is to make Kindness Corner in every school in Montgomery County Public School. And I think it doesn't need to be as big as mine. I want to thank my son, Pedram, who is a blazer, and my husband, Nader, to put up with me. Because if you go to my house, I can't feed everything at the school. And Ms. Johnson does look for every storage that she can give me. But my basement and my rooms are filled with Kindness Corner donations. So little by little, I take them back to, and that's why we do the Freebie Fridays. And our last one will be right before the graduations of our 12th graders to make sure everybody has everything they need for the summer. Um, as an American, well, as an Iranian American immigrant myself, um, I understand that language should never be a barrier to supporting our families. And I use that term all the time because as a parent community coordinator, we cannot have barriers hold us back from helping our families. And every family 
no matter where they are from, what language they speak, you can speak to them from your heart. And believe me, I sit with parents in my office quietly on a Google translator, and that's how we talk. I don't call the language line. We just sit there, we do it, and they walk with whatever they need. So again, that term I use all the time. Um, language is no barrier. So my hope is to spread the kindness corner in every corner of the Montgomery County Public School. And Dr. McKnight, I've worked with you before, and I hope that that would be something that you would consider. I brought the posters. That's my gift to you. <laughs> so what I do, and I have it all over the Blair. So again, thank you so much for everything. Thank you for this award, and congratulations to everybody who received this. Thank you very much. Congratulations again. Please join me in welcoming board member Lynn Harris to introduce the remainder of our awardees in this category. Thank you, Arvin. Um, uh, it's very, I'm um, really very honored to be presenting awards in this category as a recent MCPS teacher myself. Um, I taught medical science at Thomas Edison High School of Technology, um, and I'm very heartened to hear about so many of the awardees this evening are talking about the importance of these partnerships in providing our students opportunities to really experience the world of professional work that they aspire to. And as, as I think Sarah mentioned too, it's this, it, high school is the great time to decide something is not for you, because then you're saving yourself you know, time frustration, money, moving forward, when you're already coming forward with that kind of experience. So I'm very uh, happy to be here. And I also want to echo something that my good friend Luis said earlier um, about the importance of arts. Because a lot of our awardees here work with our incredibly diverse community of, of students and families. And our students come to us from every imaginable background, from comfort and privilege and security to the exact opposite of that almost unimaginable challenge. But the arts are universal. It doesn't matter what language you speak to appreciate music or to learn those dance steps. Or if you look around the walls, you see art that was produced by students at Newport Mill Middle School, one of our very diverse schools. And if you look at this art, you'll see a reflection of some of the deep cultural backgrounds our students bring to us and how that enriches the work that we do. So if you haven't already, before you leave, just take a look around at some of the visual art. And again, visual art, so they're very universal. Um, the first uh, award E that I get to uh, share with you this evening is uh, Marian Hammersky, if we can play that video. Hi, I'm Pat Murphy, Deputy Superintendent. Hi, I'm Libby Rogelboy, Executive Director for the Deputy Superintendent. And today we are very proud and honored to honor our very own Marianne Hamersky for one of the Distinguished Service to Public Education Awards here in MCPS. Marianne has worked for over 27 years in MCPS, and over that time she's worked for two Deputy Superintendents, two Associate Superintendents, and one Chief of Staff. In all those roles, she has the grit, the mindset, and the willingness to support our staff and our students in, in any way possible. And for me as a newcomer here in MCPS, she has just been a tremendous asset to me and all the other folks that we work with. She's got a great record, a great history, and she's really facilitated all the work we've been able to do this year. So Marianne, to you, your entire family, and to the MCPS community, we want to honor you this evening and say a big thank you to all the work you've done over those years. Good evening, everybody. I don't have a speech. I'm a behind the scenes girl. I have always been. I started as a paraeducator 27 years ago, part time. My neighbor talked me into taking it, and I wasn't sure it was for me, but obviously it was. So then I moved into an office climate at the school, and then I moved up here dealing with parents and staff and schools and principals and getting them the support that they need. 
um, about three years ago, I moved down to work with the deputy superintendent, who at that time was Dr. McKnight. Um, and then she got promoted. So I got moved. So I went to work for the chief of staff at the time, part of her office. And then he moved. So I got to move again. So I came to support Dr. Murphy and his role as deputy superintendent. So on behalf of all the support staff who worked tirelessly to support the executive level positions, um, I'm accepting this word on their behalf because it does take a lot out of us to support them and keep them on task and on time. Um, <laughs> So thank you to the board. Um, I'm very appreciative of it. And that's it. Okay. Yeah, and Marianne does keep things running on time. That's for sure. Um, uh, our next uh, award winner is Sarah lucas Joyce. If we could play that video. Hello, my name is Kate Whitehouse, and I have the pleasure of introducing Sarah lucas Strice. Currently, Sarah serves as both an adapted art teacher and a curriculum instruction and assessment specialist at Longview School. Sarah knows educators and families across the county and is always looking to connect others and assist where it's needed. She goes so far above and beyond the requirements of her position that her extracurriculars could amount to a full-time job. Sarah serves as a sponsor of SNAG, the Special Needs Alliance Group, through which she facilitates meaningful and engaging activities and events for individuals with severe and complex disabilities. Sarah has supported numerous fundraising efforts and collected countless toys that have been switch adapted during SNAG's first and second adaptathon. Sarah serves as a trainer for the art teachers who have alternate learning outcome students, delivering yearly system-wide trainings and providing one-to-one -one support for art educators who work with students with special needs populations. Her unyielding commitment to her craft is evident in her having awarded the inaugural advocate for inclusivity through art teacher of the year award in 2022 and career art teacher of the year for MCPS in 2021. Sarah's digital content and lessons went viral during COVID with her adapted yoga and meditation classes, drawing participants from all over the world. Sarah was an early adopter of the research-based practices in Literacy for All. The professional development she co-facilitated at Longview directly led to MCPS adopting it for the use with ALO populations. There are countless instances of Sarah serving as a leader, mentor, and advocate for special needs teachers and their students. Being a lifelong learner, she is currently completing the latter half of her national board certificate and is an exceptional needs specialist, learning yet another language to, to meet the needs of the students she serves. Congratulations, Sarah. Your recognition is very well deserved. sweet. So hi, everybody. I feel like I'm so tired keeping up with Dr. McKnight for these last three days and all of these events. Y'all, I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> and the BOE members that were here last evening, good on you, ladies. All right, so first things first, thank you to all the distinguished members of the Board of Education. This is huge, gigantic, like way outside my wheelhouse or comfort right now. <laughs> Um, thank you to Emily Benish and Katie Whitehouse, who are the ones that, you know, saw the merit in what I do and try to do, and they're two amazing special educators. Don't poach them from my school, but they're great. Um, every day I have the esteemed pleasure of being entrusted to work with the most impacted, complex, and vulnerable students that MCPS serves. While our students' complexities are tremendous, the severe disability population within MCPS is incredibly small. If you take the population of Stephen Knowles and Longview and smush them together, it's like just over 100 kids. 
It would be easy to forget we exist if we didn't tag you in every single social media post that all of us do. So sorry about all those Twitters, y'all, but somebody's got to look. I do what I do because our students deserve the opportunities and resources their non-disabled peers have access to. While I aim to support autonomy, create opportunity, and improve the quality of life for my students and their families, I can only do so much. Our students need visibility, and our families need support. My boss's boss's boss is here. <laughs> my charge to all of you, everyone in this room, we're all change makers, right? Or we wouldn't be here. My charge to all of you is to come and visit Onreal. Come and visit. We love the company. Come find out how many batteries are needed to operate the speech generating devices of 60 plus students. It's a lot. Witness the ballet of staffing when our amazing students have 11 a.m. aquatics, but also have to get tube fed for lunch. Marvel at how everything is meticulously adapted for student use, from eating utensils to instructional materials and furniture. There is literally nothing that we can take from a box and give it to our students. I want you to really think about that. Not a book, not a pencil, not a crayon. There is nothing that we can take and give directly to our students. Now for the thank yous. This is a good part, right? Thank you to my first principal within MCPS, Elia Ciadini, who set the tone for my MCPS journey by encouraging me to enrich not just the educational experiences of my students, but also their lives. I'm sure she'd credit Renee for that, right? <laughs> Thank you to my current principal, Sarah Starr, for being full of that big change energy, leading by example, and always presuming competence with our students. Thank you to Jessica Hamlin for being my snag co-pilot, and Courtney Fike for being my forever sounding board. Thank you to my phenomenal colleagues at Longview for supporting my efforts and helping them come to fruition. To the students and families of Longview, thank you for teaching me every day and allowing me to be part of the community and the cause. They will have to roll me out of Longview eventually, just to be really clear. <laughs> Thank you to my mother and late father, who instilled in me the importance of living a life of service to others. My dad was an MCPS educator who was at Gaithersburg and Richard Montgomery. Um, he himself had a wonderful legacy of service, just ensuring the success of all of his students. So that was, it's awesome to be here. Thank you for sharing this moment with me. Thank you to my husband. You hear me? All right. This man drives all over creation, picking up donations from my school, giving up nights and weekends to support events, and turning a blind eye when my credit card bill comes. Y'all, I'm telling you, he sees those zeros and knows who paid for those events. To my children, phones down. Hi. Thank you for sharing me with all of these other people, and with my students, and with the community here in MCPS. I hope when you grow up, you understand why I do what I do, and you see the value in helping the other people, OK? All right, this is where I get to be weird. To my fellow award recipient, Hannah Lucas Dreis, I live for embarrassing you, and this moment is absolutely no different, like real talk. I don't know if any parent could possibly be more proud than I am of you right now. You faced innumerable challenges in your 18 years and have still found the strength of character to help others. You have excelled at every turn and I know your brilliance and compassion will allow you to continue the phenomenal things that you've already begun to do. Game recognizes game, kid. All right, thank you all so much. This is truly just an honor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I have to say, two years ago, I had the honor of uh, representing the board at the graduation ceremony at Longview, and I met Sarah that day, and that was, you know, that was 2021, so we were, that was interrupted COVID year, and she was telling me about all the myriad ways that the that the dedicated teachers at Longview who, who serve our most medically fragile and uh, students with the most complicated needs had adapted their work so that they can continue to engage their students and move their learning forward, um, even though they couldn't physically be with them. 
And one of the things that I came away from that conversation with was a reinforcement of my deep belief that we need, as a system, to do so much more asking of our expert educators in the classroom than we do telling them, because they're the ones that know how to engage and reach their students most effectively. And so I am a huge fan of the work that you do. And our next nom our, our next award winner is uh, Sofia Vega Ormeno. If we could please play the nomination video. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jaquise McCray Jr. And I currently serve as the College and Career Information Coordinator at Magruder High School. I first want to thank the Montgomery County Board of Education for hosting this event and acknowledging the great work ethic our staff and community members do each and every day for our students. In many ways, I would not be where I am today without the help of Dr. Sophia Vega Ormeno. Dr. Vega currently serves as one of, the, uh, one of Magruder's high school's assistant principals, where she serves the Magruder Cluster, leads anti-bias, anti-racist efforts, and inspires all of our students. More specifically, she inspires our students of color. However, I nominated Dr. Vega to receive a Distinguished Service to Public Education Award in the MCPS staff category, not for what she does for Magruder High School every day, but for the work she has done to inspire young Latina scholars all over the county. Since I have known Dr. Vega, she has been a leader and advocate for the Latinx community. Identifying as a proud Afro-Latina herself, she pitched, organized, and executed MCPS's inaugural Latina Legacy Conference with the purpose of building trust, bridges, and roads for MCPS Latina scholars. Through presentations, a career panel, performances, and many more, approximately 100 Latina leaders within the community mentored 300 Latina students, representing every MCPS high school, and provided resources tailored to students' needs. That day, as I was honored to bring Magruder High School students to the conference, I saw hope and inspiration in their eyes. She has since worked to help other conferences take place, such as MCPS's inaugural Youth Equity Summit, and is currently working on MCPS's second annual Latina Legacy Conference. She is a friend and colleague of mine and an inspiration to many. Dr. Vega, enjoy the acknowledgement. You definitely deserve it. Buenas noches. I first want to thank Montgomery County's Board of Education for hosting this inspiring event. You don't know how amazing it feels to be seen. I also want to thank Mr. McCray for the nomination and his assistance in ensuring that our Magruder High School students were represented at this school year's inaugural Latina Legacy Conference. My name, as Mr. McCray stated, is Dr. Sofia Milagros Vega Ormeño. I am a proud Latina, I am a proud Afro-Latina, a proud Peruana, the very proud assistant principal of Magruder High School and soon to be principal intern of Lakelands Park Middle School. I am also the young girl who never saw anyone that looked like me represent her in her educational journey. Not throughout the 12 years in her public school system, and rarely in the now 13 years of attending colleges and universities. You wondered how I became a doctor, that's how. And I remember being the only person of color in many of my advanced classes. I remember feeling misunderstood and undervalued as an immigrant. I remember feeling overwhelmed by having to be a student, an employee, and a translator for my family, all while being the first in my family to go to college, to apply for the FAFSA, to get a degree, and I remember wishing someone would give me the voice I knew that I deserved. I remember hoping someone would see the struggle that I was too ashamed to speak about. But my mom always told me I had to be stronger than those that had othered me. Because we immigrated here for a better life, 
because we didn't leave our entire family without reason. Thank you, Mom, for the reminders. She, by the way, has given 23 years of service to MCPS. <laughs> I also promised that she would retire by the end of this school year, so. <laughs> but I knew I needed someone like you, like me, at school. I needed someone to remind me I was strong enough when I felt weak. I needed to see me in my counselors, in my teachers, in my administrators. It is for that reason that this past October, I planned and brought to life the Latina Legacy Conference for MCPS to remind Latina scholars and staff members of how powerful we are, and to remind us of our value and our worth, to empower us to move forward together, to raise each other up, to give back to our communities. And you know what? I'm now starting to see us in our teachers, counselors, and administrators. But I know that our work is not done. I know that not only our Latina scholars, but our black and brown scholars and our emerging multilingual learners need us. So I will continue to facilitate cohort-inspired sessions to prepare MCPS leaders to lead high-impact schools. I will continue to be a sponsor and supporter of MCPS's Minority Scholars Program to show students that we care and give voice to their concerns. I will continue to give back to McDaniel's Equity and Excellence in Education Certificate and Master's Program as an instructor. I will continue to push for us to talk about race and equity in our district-wide implementation team meetings that help break down the data of our anti-racist audit. And I will continue to host the Latina Legacy Conference until the students that sit in our conference chairs become the leaders of our buildings. I will continue to be an anti-racist leader. Having said that, I want to take a moment to shout out a couple of people and organizations that helped my vision become a reality and have become my support system. First and foremost, I want to thank the conference sponsors, Poder Educators, I know I see some Poderosas in here, and the Office of Strategic Initiatives for helping plan and fund the conference. I also want to thank my mother, Juan Armenio. I want to thank my niece, Gabrielle Vega, I want to thank my best friend, Abby Shitave, and my boyfriend, Nathan Grant DeWitt, for always supporting me and my visions. I know I can be a lot, so thank you. <laughs> and I'll finish off with a little plug. I look forward to seeing each of you at this year's, or next school year's, second annual Latina Legacy Conference, which is going to be taking place on October 14th at Montgomery College, Tacoma Park, Silver Spring Campus. We got a lot more women to empower, and I still need funding. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. That conference was amazing. I'm very much looking forward to this October as well. And I know that um, the Magruder community is already mourning, Dr their beloved assistant principal moving on. Um, and now the last award that I will be presenting is for Stephen Lightman. If we could please view, show the nomination video. Good evening. Thank you board for recognizing Steve Lightman for this award. Um, I'm Jesse Weeman, and I nominated him because Steve is somebody who takes his own responsibility to go above and beyond and make sure everybody around him has a positive experience. He makes sure that whether he's working with his students or working with staff through um, leadership roles, he's always trying to make sure everybody has what they need uh, to go above and beyond and be successful. Um, and I know if anybody knows Steve, you know he jokes around about being a PE teacher and how uh, it can be easy, but if you've ever had to walk a mile in his shoes, that is not the case. And uh, I, have, I have the rare opportunity of actually walking a mile in his shoes. Uh, for April Fool's Day one year, we decided to switch and I gave him some of my art lessons and he gave me some of his PE lessons and we sort of switched, swap places for the day. And uh, it was totally eye-opening and a whole nother challenge going from individualized art projects to big collaborative work together team sports sort of stuff. Um, while I had a lot of fun and the kids really enjoyed it, it's definitely something that 
I don't think I want to teach PE again. <laughs> um, it's really great. And he's constantly motivating his students and his staff and his coworkers. So that's why I nominated Steve Lightman. Hi, everybody. Hey, pal. I'll, I'll tell you what. It's easier sitting there watching. This is nerve-wracking. I've never talked before a room full of people, except every day for the last 22 years. But they've never been this age before. You know, like 21 and 22 years old. So good evening, fellow educators, administrators, Board of Education members, Dr. McKnight, and families. It's an honor to be standing here uh, before you as a recipient of this year's Distinguished Service to Public Education Award for MCPS staff members. So they told me I have two minutes. I'm going to do my best. If anyone wants to time me, please let me know how I did. Just a little bit about me. Um, I was raised in Rockville, went to Ritchie Park, Julius West, and Richard Montgomery High School, uh, which is interesting because now I teach at Baird Rustin, which feeds into Julius West and then Richard Montgomery High School. Uh, the principal of Richard Montgomery is actually the mother of a Spanish teacher I had at Julius West. So I like to tell my students how you are walking the same exact path that I walked. Everything you're going through, I have already been there. Um, so a little bit more about me. It's my 22nd year teaching physical education, and it's my 11th year in Montgomery County. So 11 years ago, I was at a crossroads. Uh, I was working in another county. Things were not going too well. So my wife and I, we all talked, do I continue working for another school system where my administration was totally unappreciative of everything I was doing? Do I resign completely or give it a try again and apply to Montgomery County? And I had applied two other times and was not able to get in. Thankfully, third time was a charm. I was hired at Greencastle Elementary and the doors started opening. Worked for an amazing principal named Kevin Payne, who uh, now teaches in Atlanta, or is a principal in Atlanta. And I met Jesse Weeman. Uh, Jesse and I ran a mentoring program at Greencastle, and we formed a softball team at our school, which now we have at Baird Rustin, and I'm actually the commissioner of the MCPS Teacher Softball League. So other teachers and Board of Ed members and everybody here, if you'd like to play, we'd like some extra teams next year. <laughs> Okay, and actually everyone here in central office, you'd be playing against us every week, so uh, we would love to have you. Um, but since Jesse and I met 10 years ago, we've con continued to stay friends and talk about just how to be better teachers and better people. Um, as Jesse said, he always saw my vision and dedication to giving students new opportunities, whether it be taking students to baseball games through mentoring um, or mentoring students once a month. So 11 years ago, we both parted ways from Greencastle for the same reason I left another county in Maryland, which I'm not saying. Um, opportunities were limited, and our work just wasn't appreciated by our administration. And I truly believe that when you work for administrators that want to see you succeed and they open doors for you, great things will happen, and that's why I'm standing here today. I was hired by Rachel Dubois and Katie West. Katie West, uh, my principal over my principal here um, and Melissa Goldberg have been my amazing administrators since I joined the Baird Rustin family. They support me in my personal life and my professional life. We bounce ideas off each other and they always give me the green light to make my ideas come to life. All of my accomplishments at Baird Rustin are because Katie and Melissa have opened up doors for me and to make my visions a reality. Some of these things uh, have included coordinating food truck Fridays for the staff, organizing a run club for our students, being the first school in Montgomery County to be partners with the First Tee program to teach kids how to play golf, uh, organizing free pizza for safety patrols every month, and countless other programs. Katie and Melissa's doors are always open, and they love watching our students and our teachers succeed. This job, I find, is very, very simple and easy when your administrators treat you like you're part of the family. It makes you work harder, and it makes you want to go the extra mile. So as a result, this award that may sit on my desk or in my office, Katie, this really belongs to you and Melissa and Andrea, my wife, 
my son Miles, and then my son Josh, because all of them have given me the opportunity to do the things that I've always wanted to do to make our students better. So while you give a round of applause, please, please give a round of applause to Katie, Andrea, Josh, Miles, and Melissa. Thank you so much. I'm truly, truly humbled. And just another special thank you to all of our MCPS award winners tonight. And uh, it's just, I think, humbling to think that we just awarded, gave some awards to just a tiny little tiny little slice of the amazing people that work in this system every day serving our students. So the work that they do, it just has ripples. And you know, we see what these folks are doing. And it, you know, magnify that by a thousand times. And you see what's happening in our schools every day. Um, now it is my privilege to introduce my fellow board member, Brenda Wolf. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, I think you got the, the notes mixed up here. Good evening. You know, we have a very special situation tonight, one that I'm not aware that we've had recently. We have a mother-daughter award situation. Now, you heard Sarah up here getting an award. I'm here to present the award to Hannah. Hannah Dreas, Hannah Lucas Dreas. I gotta find the notes because they have messed up the pieces of paper. <laughs> it, it, you know, we've talked a lot tonight about diversity. We usually think of that in terms of race. We usually think of it in terms of religion, but we also have to think in terms of disability. And this young lady has done a lot. You heard a. You heard from her mother. Her mother has a heart of gold. She's raised a child that has a heart of gold. So please play the nomination video. Hi, my name is Jessica Hamlin and I would like to thank the Board of Ed for sponsoring this award for whom I've nominated Ms. Hannah Lucas Dreas, who has been working with special needs students since her days at Clemente Middle School. Um, she has done a plethora of things from school functions and extracurricular activities, such as dances, assemblies, and even evening performances. She's also started a group at Toolsville High School called SNAG. Um, SNAG began helping students at Longview School initially, and they have grown to do many things. This year alone, they did an adaptathon, which they took toys that many uh, children use and made them switch adapted for our students to be able to access and play with. They've also um, raised and collected money and toys for Longview. Um, she and her group have done an amazing job helping uh, the community and uh, our school build those relationships and partnerships with businesses. She is an incredible young woman who has an amazing GPA and is uh, in the Global Economy Magnet Program at Poolsville. She is excited to go to college in the fall and I'm very excited to see where she goes. Congratulations, Hannah, for winning this award. So come on up, Hannah. And you know, I'm gonna ask your mom to come up too because we don't often get a mother-daughter picture. You're not gonna be in the first picture, but we wanna get a mother-daughter picture of this. Congratulations. We're always so proud of our students. Are we holding it the right way? Come on, don't be shy. You've raised a wonderful daughter, and you've gotten an award, too. Thank you. Next, I'm going to call up. I'm going to call up to say a few words. Come on out. So I wanted to say thank you to the distinguished members of the Board of Education for recognizing my commitment to the service of others. 
I'm honored to be acknowledged alongside such esteemed and accomplished individuals. Um, I founded the Special Needs Alliance Group, SNAG, to provide allyship to students with complex disabilities through service projects, volunteering, all with the hope of supporting independence and improving accessibility. This year, SNAG facilitated or supported 13 efforts in nine months, ranging from face painting at community events to hosting two adaptathons in which we switched adapted toys, making them accessible for use by students with complex disabilities. Aiden Vaca and I are currently completing the prototype of an adapted garden bed through Project Lead the Way at Poolsville High School, our engineering uh, class. The gardening bed adjusts in height, allowing individuals in various types of durable medical equipment to use it. From a kindergartner in a roll litter to a 21-year-old in a walker or wheelchair, all of Longview students will have more autonomy when gardening this summer. Volunteering at Longview and coming to understand the complexities and needs of its students has directly impacted the trajectory of my life and what I intend to do with it. This fall, I will be attending the Honors College at the University of Pittsburgh, where I will double major in neuroscience and rehabilitative sciences with concentration in assistive technology, while also minoring in Hispanic culture and language. So I'm definitely going to be busy. <laughs> I wanted to say thank you to Jessica Hamlin for sponsoring the Special Needs Alliance Group when it got too big to be called just Hannah and her friends. And I wanted to say thank you to all the staff and students at Longview for teaching me so much these last few years, and to Principal Starr for being open to supportive of my projects. Finally, since my mom is also being honored tonight, I wanted to share with you what she's taught me about service. That work doesn't have to be grand or profound, but when it is done with sincerity and honest effort, it makes an impact that people will remember, and it does matter. She's a smart lady. <laughs> and I wanted to say thank you for having me tonight and just everything that you've done to make this possible. And to think that mom didn't want to come up and be recognized with her daughter. Such a wonderful recognition. At this time, I'd like to call up my fellow board member, Rebecca Smondrowski. Good evening, everyone. So I, too, want to start off by thanking everyone for being here tonight and to congratulate again all of our incredible and inspiring award winners tonight. With my many, many years of serving on the board, I have a true appreciation of the importance and value of these awards and of this ceremony. And I also want to thank again all of our staff and everyone who has helped to make this happen. It gets better every year, and I'm very appreciative of all of the work that goes into it. Even the people that are behind the scenes, you can't even see here right now. So it is really exciting for me to be here in person tonight and be able to introduce this final award for independent, Individual Pioneer. This award is for an individual who has made a lifetime commitment to public education and uh, there's no one like that, like John in that realm. We all know John is our state's attorney, but he's also a teacher, a coach, a friend, a father, and a grandfather, and most importantly, a constant advocate and fighter for our youth. I've personally had the honor and pleasure of working with Mr. McCarthy for well over a decade on issues that affect our county, our students, our schools, and our schools every day. And I confidently say that this is an award well-deserved. And with that, I will ask that we play the nominee's video, or nominator's video. I'm thrilled that the Board of Education is honoring Mr. John McCarthy, the state's attorney for Montgomery County, as the individual pioneer this evening. Mr. McCarthy is a steadfast advocate for Montgomery County Public Schools, and for more than 40 years, has committed to helping create a safe Montgomery County for all of our residents, including our students and families here in Montgomery County Public Schools. Mr. McCarthy is a strong believer in education and prevention. That's why he's created programs that are in our schools working directly with our students. 
To name just one example, when Mr. McCarthy learned and saw firsthand the impact of ghost guns, he reached out to the school system and proposed going to all of our high schools to host assemblies speaking about the impact and danger of ghost guns and gun violence and promoting a philosophy in which all of us work together to decrease violence in our schools and in particular gun violence, a scourge that has taken too many lives. Mr. McCarthy devotes his time personally to working with our students and families to make sure that they hear about what we can do to work together to strengthen safety in our community. Another program that he's worked on is the Truancy Prevention Program, which is currently in 18 of our middle schools. And the Truancy Prevention Program works to keep students in schools learning and to intervene beginning in middle school, which we know is particularly important in light of some of the absentee challenges that our school system faces. We are so lucky to have Mr. McCarthy as a member of our community and a strong partner of Montgomery County Public Schools. Come on up, John. <laughs> I feel like I've got fingerprints all over. Thanks. I want to thank everybody else that got an award here tonight. I'm honored to be among you. Um, well, Eric, thank you very much for the nomination. I really greatly appreciate it. Rebecca, thank you for the introduction. Um, I am the state attorney. I've been state attorney for a long time. I think people might know that, but I'm, I am equal part educator. In this county, which I've lived in for 50 years, I've taught grammar school, high school. Tomorrow night across the street, literally across the street from where I am, I'm going to give an exam that will end my 44th straight year of teaching every semester at Montgomery College. Uh, uh, I really do hope that uh, if people remember what I did as state's attorney, they'll remember the role I always thought that education played in trying to make us a safer community. I, what Eric said is, ex is exactly accurate. I think education and providing, whether we're trying to protect our seniors against scams, whether we're trying to get our kids, as Mike Durso who helps me with my truancy court program, get them re-engaged in their education. It is about education. Education is a better way of life, and it's a way to a safer community. That's why I believe in this education. Uh, I would also say, uh, there's a theme here tonight. As I sat here and I look at my friend Louis in the, Louis in the back, uh, with the Street Outreach Network, and I work with them. I, I, every event they had last summer, I was there every single time, and I'll be there every single time this year. Uh, whether it's the Jewish Community Relations Committee, uh, fighting hate crime, which we fight every day, uh, Black Ministers Conference, look, and it's coaching too, <laughs> Reverend, uh, uh, Reverend Murray, it is coaching too. Coaching is teaching too, by the way. If anybody ever coached, it's all about teaching. Um, it's about partnerships. So last time I was in this room, Dr. McKnight and I sat with a number of people because she had the courage to come out and talk about the fentanyl crisis confronting this community. And I joined with her, and I was proud to be in this room the last time in another partnership talking about educating our children about the dangers of fentanyl because we value these kids. We can't replace these kids, and that's what we were trying to speak to. So whether it was the truancy program, whether it's talking about fentanyl, whether it's talking about guns, whether it's talking about getting kids back in school, these are smart public safety things we're doing. And I'm honored to be joined with all these partners here that are doing this with me. Look, I've got grown kids. I got uh, five grandchildren. And I will tell you tonight, I'm getting this great award but I'm also with my granddaughter, who's 10, turning 11 tomorrow. And so besides getting this great award, I'm having a date with my granddaughter tonight. God bless you. It's a perfect night. Thank you. Happy birthday. Um, yeah, congratulations again, Dr. Uh, Mr. McCarthy. Um, now I would like to take a moment and introduce my colleague, uh, Vice President Shebra Evans, who's going to give some final remarks for the evening. Thank you all again for being here.
Very good. So it is so great to see you all. Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us here tonight. I just want to say, wow. You know, we are here celebrating our award winners, and I don't know about you, but I think the thing that resonated with me the most tonight is that we are all in this together. We are all in this together to create the best school system possible for our students. So I hope that when you walk away here tonight, from here tonight, that you've learned about individuals and organizations that are really working tirelessly to support our staff, our students, and our families. You all have gone above and beyond, and we could not be more thankful, more proud, and appreciative of you being here in our school system. Um, if there's any action I could have you take when you leave here, it's just to um, be kind, give each other grace, and just let's just continue to work together to make this the best school system possible for our students. Okay, and um, to the awardees, again, there were 17 tonight. You all are fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. We really appreciate you, and just on behalf of my colleagues, I just want to thank you for coming out tonight, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.